G'day, in today's video I'm having a look at a leader brand of laptop, which is one I can't say I've come across before. First thing I've noticed is on the power jack itself, the power jack and the power button, except we have a ridiculous amount of flex on here. So if the screen wobbles, it presses the power button. Granted the screws aren't all in position, but that is just one little bit of defect I've noticed right on the hinge. That's a bit of a terrible placement of a power button. If they'd done it over in the Kensington lock, they probably wouldn't have the same kind of issue. But if we, it looks like a fairly standard removable keyboard. I'm not sure who manufactured this one. But this is definitely like a Tong Fang style of machine or a Clevo Metabox kind of machine. Flipping it over, we have one battery. Fairly standard, very Clevo looking. I reckon if I looked up the model number here, which is SC506, we'll probably find out it is a Clevo machine. Now I've taken out all the screws here, all the screws of which were the same length. And if we take this, lift this up, this is very brittle plastic, considering it's only about two years old, potentially three. Looking underneath, we don't see too much going on. I do see a broken vent over here. So push that back down and put it aside for now. So looking at this one, it came with an i7, a i7, I believe it was an 8350. And in this instance, I've upgraded it to being a 500 gig NVMe. I didn't, uh, 500 gig SATA hard drive. It does also support NVMe. Didn't have the screw here for it. But also if I tried to clone Windows from the original drive, which was a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda to an NVMe drive, I'll have boot issues. So I've decided to stick with a 2.5 inch drive, an MX500, so a pretty decent quality SATA SSD. I'm going to put this back on. I need a couple of screws. But also, while we're looking in here, what else can we see? So we do have a not, not easily replaceable power jack, which is over here. So I'll zoom you guys in while I screw these screws in here. Checking it out, we have a very Asus style of power brick over here, which to me is very, very common, very often I see them all the time, mainly in older Asus's, which they did seem to have a fatal characteristic where the pin on the back right here would snap off from the back of that block. So this one's yet to do it, but I could definitely foresee that happening in, happening in its life. And while we're at it, we could upgrade the wireless card if we chose to. At the moment, we are running a Intel 3168NGW. So that is fairly straightforward to replace that one. We do have the Intel chip here, which as I mentioned was, an, I believe, an 8350. Single fan, so it's only about a 45, I think, less than a 45 watt chip. Go back to the hard drive here. I'm just sliding it in this way. And pushing down, that's locking it into position. And there is a single screw that I need to put back in here. So there we go. Also looking at, so we've got one hard drive. We have a daughter board with two USBs both of USB 2 speed and two audio jacks. Audio in, audio in, audio out. Bring it back down, we do have two very plain down, downwards facing speakers. We do have a DVD burner that's not currently installed. But also over here we have some crucial RAM. Have a look at that. We have a 4 gig stick of DDR4, 2400 megahertz, so fairly low performance stuff, but this particular model doesn't really support higher frequency memory. We go back down here, we have an integrated card reader, more forward downward space facing speakers. We have a USB 3 and a HDMI port near my thumb. We do have a whole bunch of plastic that just fell off from the extremely brittle machine. And so we'll be able to install another stick of RAM if, if we wanted to. 
Installation is very straightforward. Pull those tabs, the ram sticks up. We put the ram at 45 degree angle and pull down. Do take note of the notch. We don't have to disconnect the battery as it's already disconnected. So in, down. If this memory was running in dual channel, there would be a bit of a performance increase. Now, another thing I'm gonna do here is tighten up the internal hinges, which are very sloppy. Or the internal screws. The amount of turns I've just got out of that is a bit beyond a joke. So these are wiggled loose over time. We can try the same over here. That was probably about one third of a turn. That was nearly a turn and a half. So these hinges definitely need to be tightened. And from here, should be right, but basically put this back on. Now I don't know where I've put that DVD burner, which doesn't help the cause of the reassembly. But once we're back at this stage here, I'm pretty much right to put all the screws back in. If I leave that one blank and then put the drive in at the end, that would be fine. Put the screw installation, all of them are the same length. And with a little, little bit of a Google, Lead is actually coming up as leading edge computers, which is a brand that's been around in Australia now for quite some time. I'm not sure if they're still, I can't say I actually remember coming across the last one. So I'm not sure if they are still around, as it was leading edge, or leading edge was a various, it was leading edge computers, leading edge electronics, leading edge this, there's quite a few different varieties of it. So I thought that died off in the early 2000s, but this seems to be continuing. Granted, it does seem to be just a very remanufactured generic housing or generic chassis of this machine. So I'm not really thinking they'd be competing too well against other brands. Yeah, funnily enough, this corner doesn't want to actually go in. As it is quite heavily damaged. Possibly melted. That is just odd. So I'm going to bend this plastic out. Or I'll cut it out, one of the two. And now we fit in. Get those last few screws back in. <coughs> Granted, the majority of mounting points are broken, like that one for example. So now it's just play playing a guessing game on which actually still retain the plastic. This was sold as basically a school computer, which as a school computer it is fairly disappointing the overall durability of this machine. here, reinstall the battery, make sure we boot. So that is the leader SC506. Bye.